In this video, we're talking about submission, really focusing on the word submit. Now, many people in our culture today don't like the term submission. They don't want to be told to submit to anybody. And it's often treated as a cultural taboo. We don't want to be submitted to anybody. And even when it comes to marriage, in our culture today, people are like, I'm not going to submit to a man. I will never submit to a man. Um, I'm too independent. Women think that way in our culture today. But we're not just talking about marriage submission. I really want to focus on submission to church leaders, specifically to pastors. I'm going to be grounding this in, a, in several texts. But why do I bring up submission in the first place? Well, because for a couple reasons. Um, number one is I think that it's healthy for you to have a solid understanding about biblical submission for your spiritual growth so that you would increase in sanctification, so that you would live a holy life. If you do not, if you do not submit to a spiritual leader, you are more likely going to fall into sin. If you're a Christian, seasons of sin. Um, and for maybe for a false convert, you will fall away from the faith. God has appointed spiritual leaders for the church to guide them, to care for the sheep. Christ is the good shepherd. He's the chief shepherd, but he has appointed under shepherds, namely pastors. And then there are other variety of spiritual leaders within the church, um, but specifically pastors who are called to guide the sheep, guide them, point them to the chief shepherd, the good shepherd, as the under shepherds are called to do. Now, I recently came across a post from Nathaniel Tay, a good friend. I met him from a Doctrine for the Block. He's subscribed to this channel. Every time he comes on my live stream, he's saying, Gift of God has arrived. And I, I originally thought that he meant that I'm the gift of God. Uh, but he's talking about himself as the gift of God because that's what Nathaniel means. It means gift of God. He posted something on his Facebook that that I was, um, that I had noticed and I took attention to, and I appreciated his comments on this and bringing attention to something like this. And it's involving submission. And so um, I came across his, po uh, his Facebook post, Daniel Tay right here. He says, please strongly consider not publicly supporting or associating with Sam Shamoon. I believe it will be a detriment to your ministry, to the people whom he have, you have influenced to Sam himself. Sam was and is brilliant when it comes to his knowledge of the Bible and things like defending Christianity against claims of Islam. But as his platform on YouTube, so did his sense of freedom to give into uh, bad behavior. So this is a result of not being submitted to church leaders, specifically to a pastor. This is a result of that. Who is Sam Shamoon? Now, these pictures that are posted are is just evidence that Nathaniel has provided that he's just not being fair. So this is um, Anthony Rogers. And he came and spoke at uh, this. This is just this is just unfair that what Sam Shamoon had posted about him. Anthony Rogers, he came and uh, preached or did a session, I guess I should say, a plenary session, a doctor for the block at my church. Doctor for the Block was um, was a Doctor for the Block was a urban apologetics conference hosted at my church that uh, Vocab Malone, um, part of my church, put on, and we aided in that. I spoke at every single one of those um, um, conferences, and uh, so here's here's a picture. Here's some pictures that are from um, Nathaniel's posts. Um, we got in this picture, we got Nathaniel in the back here. We got Miss Titus 2 right below there. And then we got Dr. David Wood next to Nathaniel. Then we got Vocab. We got uh, D. New in there. We got Carmen who also spoke. And then at the very bottom, you got Sam Shamoon who's wearing that straight out of, I don't know, this is like a straight out of Compton type of shirt. Um, but yes, yeah, shout out to Nathaniel right there. And then we got Don and then Carmen who was one of the plenary speakers. These are real cool pictures from the conference. You got vocab in the middle. And this was all at my church. And I mean, I came across like this, these posts from Sam Schmood like years ago when his, his disdain for Dr. James White was being uh, publicized. But here's some of the things that he's posted, just really um, mean things. 
And here is his YouTube channel. Over 70,000 subscribers. And, I mean, a lot of views, more views than me, of course. I mean, the guy um, is, is brilliant when it comes to his knowledge of Scripture as far as defending the faith, defending against claims of Islam. I was first exposed to him when I was, I believe, a senior in high school when I was looking up how to defend my faith against Islam. And I came across some of his content when I was in high school. And, gosh, what was that? Well, senior in high school, 2010, like 13 years ago, I came across Sam Shmoon. And a quick story about Sam Shmoon. I was surprised when I... When he walked into my church one, one day, I'm like, whoa, this guy's an apologist. He's visiting my church. He's attending my church. This is really cool. Um, talk to him. Right when, it, right when I went to go introduce myself to him, he noticed there was a family of, a family of five. Yeah, it's family. Family of five, I believe family of five, family of five or four. Single mom in her 20s, and these are all her children. And he says to me, I introduced myself, I said, hey, I, uh, my name is Eric. Uh, thanks for attending, Sam. Uh, really cool that you're here. You've done so many things for um, in defending the faith against Islam and, and Jehovah's Witnesses and all of that. And this was before Doctor for the Block, where he spoke at that conference that year. He spoke on, he was the plenary speaker about uh, speaking about Jehovah's Witnesses. And he, even before he got on stage, you know, he, he knew, um, you know, we were Reformed and Calvinists. And he was just being, you know, joking and kind of nice about it. Um, but eventually some stuff comes out and he kind of really, is really, really against it. And just not to my face, you know, he wasn't really, but he was, he was kind. He was kind about that. And he was telling me that he was nervous to go up and speak on stage. And I'm like, wow, man, you're, you're nervous. You've been doing this for years and you know exactly what you're going to say. I encouraged him in that. Um, you know, it's like, you're going to do a great job. But previously at that encounter with that, that family, we do at that time, what we did was a meet and greet where right after worship, you have an opportunity to meet the people next to you. And so I went up and introduced myself to Sam, as I had mentioned, and he says to me, is that a single mom? And I said, yeah, she's been attending our church for uh, you know, a couple of years now. We're really, you know, we're really glad to have her. And yeah, she is, she's a single mom. These are her, her children. We love to see them there. And he says, what an evil world this is. Sick. That's evil. And I was like, such a weird thing. Such a weird thing to say, right? I understood what he was saying as far as this is evil, that she, this is just not good, not ideal, that she is single and that a man has left her to care for children. I understand that in principle, but it was just, it felt really aggressive. But um, he didn't commit to our church, kind of hopping around churches as I talked to him. He was, he was just kind of just hopping around churches. Now, if you do not submit to a pastor, then you have no accountability. Everybody needs to submit to somebody. Everybody needs to submit to, the, to somebody for their own spiritual well-being. Now, I'm going to ground this in a couple different texts, okay? So, let me go uh, to 1 Timothy 3, 2. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, and able to teach. Now, this is what a overseer, um, a pastor, elder is supposed to be. This is, they're supposed to be the person of integrity, supposed to be faithful to their wife. They're supposed to be sober-minded, which means they're able to think properly, logically, um, and also avoid drunkenness, self-control, not getting angry, not being rash, have a respectable reputation, hospitable, uh, welcoming people into their homes, and able to teach. Now, that's the qualifications for an elder, pastor. You want someone who fits these qualifications to guide you in your life, to help you along in your faith. You want someone who's able to do that. Then we get 1 Peter 5.3.5. 5. Not domineering, furthermore about elders, not domineering over those in your charge, 
but an example to the flock. A pastor is not supposed to um, a pastor is not supposed to be domineering over people. Now, submitting to a leader, you should not be submitting to a leader who's going to spiritually abuse you. Now, we're not talking about submitting. That, that's cultish stuff where you have this illogical belief system, a uh, crazy belief system, and they lord it over their people and they brainwash their people into doing immoral acts. Now, this is not what we're talking about. We're talking about not domineering over those in charge, but examples to the flock. These are people who are examples, modeling the behavior as was listed in 1 Timothy 3. And when the chief shepherd, that's what I mentioned previously about Jesus, he appears, when Jesus appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Subject, submitting, submit to your pastors, submit to them that they would guide you. You need, so here's the deal. Everybody chooses their pastor. Everybody chooses their church. Here in America, we have a church on every single corner. It's the truth. You have a church on every single corner. You choose your pastor. Everybody chooses their church. You choose your pastor. That's the truth. It's not like it was in the, the, uh, the, in, um, in the first century where Christians had to pick their nearest church and gather with that particular group of people. Now you got a church on every corner. You now need to just choose a biblical church and a pastor that's going to care for your life and is going to preach the word, who believes in orthodoxy, who believes in the essentials of the faith. You need to choose and submit to them. Now I'll talk in a moment about what submission is supposed to look like, but that is important for you to know. As this passage says, subject, likewise you are younger, be subject to the elders, clothe yourselves all of you with humility toward one another for God's purpose. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. This is a challenge that you are called to be humble and be subject to your pastor who God has entrusted to care for your life. Jesus, the good shepherd, chief shepherd has appointed under shepherds to care for your life until he returns. So you need to be subject to them. But th this 1 Timothy 5 talks about an issue of pride and, and humility. The reason why people don't want to be subject like Sam Shamoon the reason it is because of pride. If you can't submit yourself to anybody, you have no accountability and you will inevitably fall into sin and nobody can call you out. That's one of the problems that we have in, in America and with church in America. Um, not the problem with churches, but just American Christianity is that there are people, because there's so many churches, there are people who can be isolated Christians, isolated apologists, isolated Christian rappers with no authority, with, with, uh, with are not, who are not submitting to any authority, and they therefore can live their life however they want, because they have nobody looking out for them and telling them no. It's a pride issue. If you are a Christian and you are not submitted to anybody, any spiritual father, mother, pastor, spiritual leader, if you are not submitted, you are out of order and inevitably you will fall into sin. But Christ has appointed good chief or as the chief shepherd and as a good shepherd, he has appointed under shepherds to care for your soul. Uh, let's keep moving in the ver in uh, 1 Timothy 5.17. Let the elders who rule well, be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. Honor, giving honor to them. This means not talking crap about your leaders, not talking crap about your pastors. I need to say this for just a moment. Let me say this for a moment. If you are always going to church and expecting validation. And the moment your pastor tells you something, the moment your pastor tells you that you're not supposed to do something, and then you leave, and you go talk crap about him because you disagreed with what he said, you are not doing what this passage is saying. You are not giving them honor, and you are especially not giving them double honor. And we're going to talk about some scenarios in a few moments. 
but let them be considered worthy of double honor. And then we get Hebrews 13. We go down to verse 17. This one. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls. Obey and submit to them. Why? Because they're keeping watch over your souls, not just because they want to, not, uh, and if they are good pastors and good elders, um, not because they are just trying to uh, exercise authority, dominance over people, that they have this pride issue. And if they do, they're not, pra- they're not fitting the qualifications of 1 Timothy 3. Um, but if they are practicing humility and they are living above reproach and they are respectful and they are hospitable, You need to trust them because God has appointed them to care for your souls and keep watch over your souls. Obey your leaders. What does that mean? Obeying your leaders, obey your pastors means to do what they say, to trust what they say and do what they say. This means that if we see, if pastors, if we see you post something on social media and we say, you need to take that down, you are wrong then you should submit to their leadership. Here's the deal. Pastors aren't just called to call out sin in your life. Pastors are also called to care for your spiritual journey, your spiritual walk with Christ. And social media isn't in the Bible, right? There are certain things that aren't in the Bible because of the advancement of technology, because we've because of the evolution of society. And so there are problems that the Bible teaches that we that we um, can have an answer to their problems. There are new problems, there are new problems and new things, but it's the same principles that the Bible teaches that we can help guide. For instance, a pornography is not something that's taught in the Bible because it was not invented till thousands of years later. But that doesn't mean that the Bible doesn't give us principles on how to tell Christians not to watch pornography. Why? Because the Bible teaches and condemns sexual morality and lust. You need to be submitted for submitted for your health in your walk with Christ. You need to submit to your spiritual leaders. Let me tell you a, uh, let me tell you a story. My dad trained me to listen to his voice when I was a young kid. When he would talk, I would recognize his voice because when he would talk, I would stand still and I would listen to him. When he would call me from the other room and he would call me to him, I would come to him. It's a training. You need to be trained. You need to be under authority so that when a pastor tells you not to do something, it's for your good it's for your good. I'll give you another example. Submission is kind of like, in a way, submission is like a drunk driver giving his keys to, or someone who's drunk and wants to drive, but they're giving their keys to a designated driver. Now, of course, sinfulness, drunkenness is sinful, but this is an example. What they are doing is then submitting to the authority of the person who's going to drive. There is no debating. There is no uh, challenging. There is just, yes, here are my keys. What Christians should do if their pastor is respectful, their pastor has proved to be trustworthy, their pastor is orthodox, their pastor is not committing sexual immorality, their pastor is uh, living above reproach, what you need to do is give your keys to your pastor and allow them to speak into your life so that you would grow into maturity. And I think a lot of churches would be a lot more healthy if the attendees would move from just being spectators to actually being active members in a church submitting to pastoral authority. When you become a member to a church, you when you commit and take a membership class, when you become a member of a church, you are giving your keys over to a pastor saying, I trust you as my pastor to tell me when I'm wrong. You know that you're someone's pastor. You know that you're someone's pastor when they, when you, when you can say no to them and they respond and submit to that. You know that you have a pastor when they're not validating your life 
and they are not saying that everything you're doing is okay, but when they tell you no and you listen. The sheep need that. The sheep need to be cared for. The sheep need to be watched over. And if you are a member of a church, you have given the keys over to your pastor to guide you. Now, I think there are probably some tension. You listening to this and watching this, you're like some tension. Like, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to submit to anybody. I, that, that seems dangerous. Now, I'm not talking about submitting to them, submitting if they're call, calling you into sin. I'm not talking about any of that. Run from those churches that are calling you to submit to sinful ideas or sinful activities or unbiblical activities. Don't be a part of those things. But what I am telling you is for, as far as morality goes and as far as guiding you, to see you get to a next level in your relationship with Christ and in increasing in your sanctification, you need to submit to the pastors who God has appointed. That's what the Word of God says. Do this because it's for your good. Quick story real quick, and then I will end with this. We have a lot of potlucks at my church, and there was once a potluck, I don't know, five years ago, and newly married, love my wife. I love my wife. I serve my wife. I serve my wife in ways that people don't see. And my wife will ask me, potlucks, family barbecues, if I want a plate. She will feed my son. She will feed, uh, and she will feed me. She'll get her plate. There are often times where I'll say, no, I'll just get it later. But she will ask me if I want her to make me a plate. And at, at, uh, at church, one Sunday after it was an after church potluck, I'm sitting down and I'm talking and she comes up to me and she asks me if I want her to get me a plate. And I said, yes, please. Can you give me a plate? Yeah. And um, she went, she goes and gets me a plate. And there's a woman there who's single, who is in her late thirties and approaching the early forties. And she might've been 40, but I'm pretty sure she was in the late thirties. And she responded like, that can't be me. You have two feet. And I was like, that's, exa- that's exactly one of the reasons why you're probably single, right? If you can't serve in that way, if you, can, if you can't submit to your husband and serve in just a, giving a plate of food, but not seeing all the ways that I, so- I sacrifice myself uh, to love her and serve her, if she just can't go get me a food, you see that as something that's wrong? That's a problem. It's most likely why you're single. A lot of ladies are probably single and don't have a husband because they are not willing to do that to serve. Choose a church. Choose a pastor that you are willing to serve. That you are willing to serve. A pastor should be serving his congregation even more so. But you need to be cared for. You need to be watched. Your soul needs to be watched and cared for. You need to submit to a pastor. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. If you receive value from this video, like it and subscribe to this channel. And I will see you in a future video. Thanks for checking out the video today. Feel free to ask any question you want in the comment section below, or you can simply comment and provide your perspective. Also, don't forget to like this video so that it'll boost up the algorithm so we can reach a broader audience and subscribe to this channel. Feel free to check out one of these videos. I believe they'll provide value to your life as well. And I'll see you next time.